Get off the right wheel. Can we give it back up to Linda Scott Reed? <laughs> Linda just performed a half a concert for y'all. Y'all gonna have to pay extra for that, all right? So she took it back to the Twirler Girl. I don't think I, I know what she's doing. If y'all don't know, Linda used to be in a music group, a performing group, and she gave y'all a little something, something with that. But guys, can we give it up for the Senior Vice President Platinum and Diamond leadership of this company? <laughs> Shout out to a few people who came in here. They drove from far. Dre Waters, get up for Dre Waters. We didn't see him earlier. We got here today. He said he was going to be here. He's here. PJ Pickett just got here all the way, three hours away, drove here. He's here. It's about showing up, y'all. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I don't know if Vince was here at the beginning, but he's here. He's here. He's here. So we're here. And of course, I forced my wife to stay home for a little bit this morning because she didn't go to bed till four. I said, you're not going to get up here and be upset the whole day because you didn't get enough sleep. So, so she did it. So, and of course, uh, CeCe and Selena have been, they've been here. They've been here. They've been here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've been. You, you, you just got here. They, they was on time, baby. They was, she was like, don't forget CC and Selena, right? So I got, I got us. We good. We good. But guys, let's get a, a collective round of applause for all your leaders. Thank you. 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 So listen, this is your, la the person I'm going to introduce, this is the last training before lunch, okay? So you got to be a good trainer to go before lunch. Because I can smell the food already, right? But before you get your stomachs fed, I want to make sure that you get your minds fed with the information today. Uh, some of you guys came and you say, you know what, I got to get the training from this person and this person and this person. And I want to make sure you get every single thing you came for. And today we have nothing but that. I'm excited. Number one, of course, she's my wife, right? <laughs> All right. So that's exciting. We get a chance to work this business together every day, all day every day, all right? We're not just part-time, right? It's a part-time business for us, but it's a, a full-time relationship that we're in, so we're gonna keep this thing going, right? <laughs> not only that, that she has countless amounts of senior vice presidents in her organization. I don't know if she knows the count. I know I've lost count. So all the people, there's probably more senior vice presidents in her organization than there are people in this room today. Take that into consideration. On top of that, She's still doing the work. Right now, she's still putting in the work to make sure that the next wave of people have an opportunity for success. And that's what legacy is all about. Even bigger than that, she's moved to not just building people's businesses, but now helping them become more financially independent. One thing is making the money. The second thing is, what do you do once you get it? Because everybody wants that money to go to work for them. So today, I'm, I'm proud. Uh, she's coming up here, and I know one thing. She's going to give you all heart. So I hope you, yes, you have your, your notes. You're just ready to take notes, but I hope your mind is open, ready to receive the information, because we have nothing but the best of the best of the best here today. So as she walks out the building. <laughs> all right. I can keep edifying. This is my wife. I'm married to her. So on top of that, right? Not only that, guys, we have a big event coming up tonight. And I'd be remiss if I didn't plug it because we've been in the back. Yeah, my wife said, it's got to be spotless. I said, spotless? I said, they houses ain't spotless. I said, I've been to some of their houses. <laughs> I said, hold up, man. We got to be spotless. It's got to be picture perfect. Rich is coming. Let's give it up for Rich. Let's, let's give it. Listen, Rich hopped on a plane. Rich hopped on a plane to be here for us, and uh, to me, that's important. Uh, yes, he gets paid to be here, but, but trust me, there's other people that wanted to pay Rich. <laughs> trust me on that, all right? So we have one of the most talented photographers and videographers in the industry is here with us to capture these moments so you guys have. Let's give it for Rich. But tonight, today we're going to learn. Today we're going to get the lessons. But tonight, as my... Southern folks say, we finna turn up, all right? So we're going to have a good time tonight. The tickets are what the tickets are. If you ain't got it, you better get it. You're going to be on the outside looking in, and I got security, so don't, don't think you're going to bust through. 
My boy said, you want me to bring my pit bull too? I said, nah, no pit bulls in my community, right? But this is going to be a big event. Tonight, what we have for y'all is special. Not just a pool party. Not just three acres of land in the richest community in the county. Not just that. But you have living proof of what's possible if you stick to the grind. Living proof of what you can accomplish. And even a goal to say, maybe I want to go further than that. Today, there's going to be a golf cart taking you around to see what a six and seven and eight million dollar home looks like. You're going to be able to get a tour of the neighborhood to see people who have a pool house bigger than some people's dream house. And I'm letting you guys know it comes from this. It's not anything else outside of this. This is what it is. People say, do y'all do anything else? Yeah, we live. <laughs> this is our core. This is our stream. So while you're doubting it and doing it, listen, somebody else is doing it. Somebody else is running to SVP. Somebody heard Tupac say SVP by national. They said, oh, done deal. Others are thinking, oh, that might be a little too tough for me. I'm telling you guys right now, it's possible. Tonight, you're going to see it. This is bigger than the pool party. This is bigger than that. This ain't, you don't come for swim lessons. This is here for you to network with some of the top leaders in the industry, and you can rub shoulders with people when it's a social environment. Do you know that's when you get the real information? All right, so tonight... Oh, man, five to nine. Listen, at nine o'clock, y'all got to go home. <laughs> Let me change that. Y'all ain't got to go home, but you got to get the heck up out of my house. Is that all right? I got my mosquitoes on a, on a timer, all right? They're going to get you out of there one way or another. So this is going to be a big event. If you don't have tickets for it, get it before you leave. Don't miss the moments to change the business. Because it's that, the things that are intangible. You'll be wishing you were there. You'll be seeing the pictures and, oh, I'm a stunt on those pictures if you ain't, if you ain't there. You'll be like, why is he showing up? I told you to come. I even recruited a DJ for the night. Let's give it up for Dre. Thank you, Dre, for coming out. Yes. If you know me, you know I would be the DJ, the security, the lifeguard, the cook. I'm trying to do it all. But my man is good at that, so we're going to do that. So with that being said, y'all, it's time. It's time to hear this training information from the first diamond in the company. Groundbreaking. Matter of fact, I remember the conversation. She said the $300,000 bonus at Diamond wasn't enough to make her run for Diamond. And in that same conversation, she's talking to me. And I said, it would change. It would help me out. I don't know about you, right? <laughs> I would run for Diamond for 300 grand. Anybody here would run for 300 grand? And that's when you start thinking, how much money are you making with 300 grand don't move you? This is, a, this is the success you're going to see today. So with that being said, let's get on our feet. Let's give it up. DJ, let me get some music for none other than Diamond Senior Vice President, Tashina Anderson. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Diamond Minds Boot Camp. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Good, because we have so many people that will be here pouring into you guys this weekend. I'm so excited for everyone who showed up. Give yourself a round of applause for just showing up. Now, I, I have to tell uh, quickly, I have to tell my side of the story how we wind up having this pool party at our home. So, um, you know, my husband used to be a party promoter, right? And so we were like, okay, we want to make this event great. And, you know, he's like, what about a pool party? And this was the look on his face. <laughs> what about a pool party? <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like, I don't, I remember the last, I don't know how many of you have been in the business long enough to remember the last big event we had at our home, but there's videos that are out there on social media. And the last home we lived in, we had like valet parking. You came up to the home. We had a diamond ice sculpture. Remember that, Pac? The diamond ice sculpture. We actually took people on tours of the home. The home was 18,000 square feet. And it was big enough to fit about a good 150 people in the foyer. 
And so as we took people on tours and everybody dressed up and we had the casinos in the basement. And so when everybody came, they had such a fun time, like an incredible time. But if you could have seen my life a week before the event, there was nothing fun about that event for me. <laughs> Just getting it together. I mean, when we do things, we always want you guys to have such a great experience. And so it takes a whole lot to put events together, yes? yes. So I started putting this event together about a week and a half ago, OK? And all this week, I've gone to bed. Now, how many of you know how early I go to bed? I'm in bed like by 9. My kids go to bed. Guess who else goes to bed? Me. Every night, I'm up to 2 in the morning, just making sure everything is perfect for you guys. So we have such an incredible lineup. When you get there, the first hour of the event, we're giving tours. So please be on time, because we're on a time constraint, because of just when the sun goes down, right? And so get there as soon as you can, because if you want a tour, by who? Who's doing the tours? <laughs> Me. OK, if anybody's going to drive the golf cart, it's going to be who? It's going to be me. I'm going to have fun. We're going to have a fun tour. So we wanted to, guys, you know, when I was new in the business, one of the things we did was we did vision, vision boards. You ever did like a vision board? And every time I had moments in my business when I was going from like ED to ND or national director to senior vice president, I would always print out the cars that I wanted to drive and the homes that I wanted to live in. Have you ever done that? And I would like print them out and I would put them all over my office. I would have them as my screensaver on my phone and in my computer. And everything about our life today started off with just a vision. And you're going to be seeing everything that I've thought of in my mind and seen online of what I said I wanted if I went all in with this business. Because when I picked this home, just so you know, I picked this home. I didn't just go and pick a home. I made sure as I was picking this home that I was surrounded around people that were better than me. Every home is bigger than mine. Every home is like, when, you, when I see their homes, I'm like, what do you do? You know, like, I wanted to be inspired. If you ever follow me on social media, you'll see me walking in my community. All of that was on purpose so that every day I can be inspired to get to where they are. And so I want you to see my vision because it was picked from my imagination and it was picked from all the hard work and all the days that I believe that if I'm going to put everything into this, I want to get everything out of it that I've always dreamed of. I want every car, every home, every vacation. I want everything that I've ever th thought of through this business. Does that make sense? So you guys are going to have so much fun. We got some other things in store for you. I don't even want to tell you everything. But I'm just going to tell you one little small thing. Is that OK? I don't want to tell you everything, but I got so much cool stuff lined up. When you first get there, you're going to get CBD gummies that I have personally made for you with my own hands. I have made these gummies so that you could get some CBD gummies as soon as you walk through the door. Listen, when I do it, OK, I do it, OK? People are like, oh, do I got to pay for the cookout? Well, you dad, this ain't no cookout. I want you to know. This is a real event that you are attending tonight. So just know everything was just thought out very thoroughly. And I'm only giving you one little thing, but I have several things lined up for you. Not to mention, I don't have just any cookout food. I got salmon. I got shrimp kebabs. OK, you come into the diamond house. I ain't giving you just hot dogs and hamburgers, OK? Now, y'all need to get down time, because about a good 30 of y'all paid at the last minute, OK? So I overboard food, but y'all so last minute, I was buying for what happened about three days ago. And then all of a sudden, what happened? All of y'all didn't bought y'all ticket. I was like, well, God darn it. Now I'm sending my son out to buy more food for y'all, OK? So I'm excited. We're going to have a really good time. So it's important to be on time. What time does the event start? Five, Five o'clock. OK, great. I'm going to get in my training. And I'm not going to have a long training today. I want you guys to get through all the great trainings today. And then we're going to go right into the event tonight. But I got something special in store for you today. So take out your pen and paper. Get ready. 
Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. My training is called Step Out on Faith. What's my training called? So I'm going to read a story from you for you. Hold on. This is a story from the Bible. Are you guys familiar with the Bible? Good. Then you should know this story. <laughs> the story says, and Peter answered him, Lord, if it is for you, command me to come to you on the water, he said. Come, so Peter, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So how many of you know that story? You're familiar with that story, right? So I want to get into the training today because this is called stepping out on what? Faith. Stepping out on faith. How many of you believe that you have faith when it comes to this business? Anybody believe they have faith? Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. You believe you have faith? Okay. We're going to see. We're going to see how much faith y'all have. Because I really believe there's like three levels when you think about this story, right? The first level, first step, let me say the first step is the, the step of the decision. Well, in Peter's case, the, decep, the step of decision meant for him to just follow behind God, right? It was, it was how he ended up in the boat in the first place because he, was, he made a decision to follow him. And some of you have made this conscious decision to be in this business. Do you agree with me? Yes. And that is like a true step of faith. It's just the act of the decision. Because how many of you know that you've talked to people over and over again, and there are so many people that won't even make the decision? Right? So the fact that you've taken this first step, to me, is a big step. It's a big step in the process because we have so many people that are afraid, that don't want to do it. And a lot of times, we are angry at them. Aren't we angry at them? <laughs> Very angry, right? And we're angry because we're like, how come you don't see it? Well, think about how many people Jesus was probably thinking like that didn't believe what he, that he was real. Like, think about how many people were probably saying, oh, you ain't real, right? And how many people he might have talked to that didn't decide to follow him. You think he, everybody he talked to was like, or believed, even when he did the miracles. How many times in the Bible when he performed miracles, people still didn't believe? So the fact that you made the decision is one step of faith. And that's a huge decision. And for me, I make that decision, we have to make it like almost every day, right? Right? You don't make the decision the minute you sign up. How many of you agree with me on that? You have to make the decision even when you don't feel like it. You have to make the decision sometimes when you feel like you want to give up. Sometimes we make the decision, quit, and then come back and make the decision again. Have you ever done that? Okay, I have. I've done it. I've, done it. I've had times where I say, you know what, forget this. These people get on my nerves. And then I'm like, okay, all right, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back in. I'm back in. Right? Because you have to consciously, it's not like a one-time thing. It's a daily thing of making the decision. And what you have to be mindful of is that when it comes to what you want to get out of the business, every time you go from one step and then the next step, what happens is when you lose faith, the second part happened when Peter made that commitment to get out of the boat. Remember that? 
So, okay, he made the commit. First, he made a decision to follow Jesus. Then the second part was the commitment to get out of the boat. That's a huge part. But what happens is, what happened as soon as he got out of the boat, he started doubting. And what happened? <laughs> that Peter, he, now, he didn't see all this that Jesus can do. He follows him, says, I believe you. He gets in the boat to follow him. He gets out of the boat because he asked him to get out of the boat. And, st- and started doing what? He, st- he started to sink because he started to doubt. But when you take one step, because you made the decision to do the business, But then when you take the second step, and that's the second step of commitment, and what happens is if you make the step of commitment, but you don't make it completely, you keep going backwards steps. Have you ever seen your business do that? It's like I've committed, I got somebody in, but then it's not working, so then, you know what, I'm going to pull back. And then you go back a step, and it's almost like you have to start over. You have to start all over again. Because you got to start all over again with the commitment again. And that's the hard part, is that when you miss a step or when you take a step back, deciding, do I want to keep moving forward and making the commitment again? When I made it before and I didn't get what I wanted the last time. I thought this was such an important part because most stories in the Bible are a true example of what happens in modern day and real life time, and you can really apply it to anything. Do you guys agree with me on that? So Peter made the decision. Then he made the commitment, but started to lose faith. Anybody in here felt like, you know, this year, last year, you might have lost a little faith? No? I mean, come on now, let's be honest. Let's be honest. We're gonna deal with. We're gonna deal with it. We got to deal with it. This is why. This is where we deal with it. In this room is where we deal with it, right? Because the whole point is to acknowledge things so that you can get better. You don't come here so that everything is happy. You acknowledge it so that what? That you can move forward and get better. Because we need to get to the next step. So we've made a decision. We have the commitment. Maybe we've lost a little faith along the way. But then there's that last step. What's the last step? Mm -mm. To me, the last step is the true example of what faith really looks like. And I was thinking about this, and I was trying to figure out how do I explain how to have that last step of faith? Because one of the things that I knew very early on is that you don't get what you want out of it unless you have the last step. So how many people can sign up? How many people could be committed? But how many people get to the top? And if you talk to any of the leaders in the company, because it's not a matter of the people that have gotten to the top, does it mean that they're special? Does it mean they're special? Don't they look kind of like you? Don't they come from where you come from? So how did they make it to that last step of faith when there's so much that this business will do to drag you down and to try to sink you and to try to get you to not believe? Do you know how hard it has to be to go to that last step when everything is against you? I remember um, I went to school at the University of Maryland College Park. And a lot of my friends that I went to high school with and uh, became friends with while in college, it's not a very nice school. So some of my friends wound up being doctors and lawyers. A lot of them were lawyers. So they went off to that next level. And a lot of them had really good paying jobs. And so, When we got out of school and I reached out to some of them because I wanted them to come into my business. Don't we always do that? And they would talk about me behind my back and I would hear things that somebody else would say. And they said, oh, she's in that little phone thing because of the the product that we had back then. And 
it was just like always a, you know, I really, you know, she in that thing, you know, and then they called it a scam and they said, oh, you know, nobody, nobody's successful in those things. They just take people money. And I, I went through mentally because the battle that we have is not a physical battle. It's not a physical battle. You think it's about the people that said no, isn't it? Oh, oh, it's not about that. You know that, right? You, you think people are saying no, and that's why you think you haven't gotten to the top. That, that has absolutely nothing to do with it. When, when I tell you it has absolutely what? Nothing to do with it. It has nothing. And when I learned that, that people don't say no to a person with faith. And when you walk into something so confident and so aware and so, oh, this is happening with or without you, it's like magic happens. It's like all of a sudden the doors open and the gates open and things just start rolling into favor for you that you can't even explain because the faith has to go to another level. So mentally, you will beat yourself up on the inside for nothing, for nothing. And no, let me not say that. Let me not say it's not nothing. Let me not say it's not nothing. It's real. It's real. And that's why it's hard, because it is real. The things that you're experiencing that's causing you to drown are real things. When Peter was losing faith, I mean, that's deep water. And if he can't swim, guess what? That's a real reason to be afraid. <laughs> if there's sharks in that water, I mean, I don't know about you. I can swim, but I ain't trying to step out in the ocean. And it's sharks and stingrays and all kind of stuff. You just talking about I ain't got no life jacket. And what if, I mean, what if they leave me? I mean, you're thinking of all kinds of things that's going on in your mind. Everything you're thinking of except for the one thing. The person who told you to walk out in the first place. I mean, he was the one that told you, when, when I took a look at this business, in the beginning, like, people would say things like, oh, you don't, <laughs> until you get tested. You know, you don't really understand or know. And then, you know, little tests would come along the way that would cause me to question my faith when it came to the business. It would just be little stuff. It could be just, okay, I just talked to 20 people and 19 said, get out of my face. That was, that, that's enough to test your faith, ain't it? It's enough to test your faith. And so I knew very early that if I was not going to believe that I wasn't going to make it, it was so many things that was trying to drown me the entire time. And each year, guess what? The test got bigger and bigger. So you, th oh, you think diamond solves all your problems? <laughs> oh, no, oh, oh. The, it just, the problems just get bigger, just so you know. And so the faith has to get what? It has to get bigger and stronger. So I was watching this. Um, I was at church one time, and the pastor had mentioned, like, um, Kobe Bryant. This was, like, back in the day. And he was like, okay. And this is how I relate my faith to this business, just so you guys know. And I, I listened to this training over and over. You ever listen to something that just hits home, and you listen to it over and over again? He said, how many of you know Kobe Bryant? Everybody know Kobe Bryant, right? And back in the day, was he the best? He was the what? He was one of the best. Now, he said, when Kobe Bryant gets on the court, who are they trying to make sure that player doesn't shoot into the basketball court, into the basketball loop? Who, who do you think they're trying to make sure? Kobe, right? You got a few people that's on the team, but who are they trying to make sure he does not get that ball in the basket. So if you ever see like a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant, one of the things he said is that sometimes they'll have to put like four people on one person to stop them. 
and you believe that, you know, things are just coming up. Oh, no, 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 no. Things aren't coming up. The reason they're coming up is because somebody's trying to stop you. The reason the thoughts are in your mind is because somebody's trying to stop you. The reason things keep going wrong is because somebody's trying to stop you. So the minute you look at stuff and you complain and you say, well, five links don't have this yet. Well, they don't have that yet. And all that is is stuff trying to what? It's trying to stop you. And the pastor said, he said, so what you have to see is that if you believe that you have something special to achieve, that the enemy will get in the way and he will purposely, if one person can't stop you, then he'll do two. And if two can't stop you, then he'll do three. And if three can't stop you, then he'll do four. And if that don't go, he's going to do the whole team to stop one person. And you think because of the issues you have right now in your home and all of those things, maybe some things that stopped you or tried to stop you from getting here, you think that just is the devil. But here's something else that I learned, too. And this is what I had to stop saying. I was like, I'm going to stop saying that that's the devil that's causing all my problems. Maybe he's causing one. <laughs> you know, he's pro he, he, he definitely is trying to stop something, right? But I was like, you know, what I learned after each trial is that each trial made me so much stronger. It made me so much stronger. And I remember saying to my husband, because this is the Diamond Minds boot camp, right? And I remember when we were going through the motions of trying to be the first in the company. I mean, that's not an a easy task. You got to know that, right? Right, right? So you know when somebody's trying to be the first that they're going to be tested, right? And I remember we were going through the trials of being the first. And when it actually happened, I remember saying to my husband, like, why do you think he let me be first? Because I didn't do it. I didn't do that. That was who? That was God. Why would you think he would let me be first? And the answer came straight to my mind before he even said anything. He said, because he knew you could handle it. He knew you could handle it. And all the tests and the trials that you went through, all the times that you wanted to give up and go back to your job and just get a job and say, forget everybody on my team. These people get on my nerves. They don't, I show up, ain't nobody there. What is going on? Like, God, why, what is, why are you testing me? All the times that I wanted to give up was nothing but just me getting ready for the day when he knew that I would have to be strong enough to handle the position. I would have to be strong enough to hold up the company. I would have to be strong enough to, that when you saw me, I didn't just have an easy ride. When you saw me, I had to have the stories to know that if I can do it, guess what? So can you. So when I talk about stepping out on faith, faith is not something you apply one day. It's just not, guys. And if you want the top level, because if everybody gets the diamond, then they got to they gotta create titanium. If we all get the diamond, then, then titanium has to come out. And then we're going to all run the titanium. Right? It has to be the next level after that. You know, when I came into the company, they hadn't even created double platinum. It was only, actually, it was only senior vice presidents when I came into the company. That was the highest level in the company was senior vice president. And what happened? People kept stepping up and stepping up and stepping up, and their faith kept growing and growing, and it was too many people getting to the level, so they had to create another level, and then another level, and then another level. 
And if you guys remember the story that I've told, if you heard me train on any training, when I tell you I went to my first platinum meeting, and I got in the meeting, and this is when they created the double platinum position. And I was like, dang, I just got here. I just got here. You already trying to change things? And so many people in the room were like upset and mad. And I'm like looking at the reactions around the room and figuring out why they so mad. And they was like, you going to keep making us keep go to the next level? And like they was mad because they had to keep going to the next level and the next level. And they wanted to stay exactly where they were. I mean, imagine you reaching the top and then they say, oh, there's another top. And I remember looking at the leader that was running the company at the time. And I looked at him. I said, you can create as many positions as you want. Because I'm going to get every last one of them. And so I'm going to look at Larry and tell Larry, you can create as many positions as you want, okay? You think you're getting rid of me? It ain't happening. Okay? That's what happens when you build in Baltimore. You kind of built Ford Strong when you come from Baltimore, right? It's like, well, you could throw a bomb on me. I'm going to still survive, okay? And there has to be this this feeling on the inside to know that even when things are bad, even when you don't understand, last thing I want him to say is, I already promised it to you. And you doubting me? Didn't I tell you you could have it? Didn't I show you? Didn't I give you the business? Didn't I put you in the business? Didn't I put you in position? Didn't I give you a good upline? I did my part. I gave you everything that you needed. And if you doubt me now, it's not because he didn't do his part. You're in the room. The, the, the examples are here. Way more than what I had when I was coming up. So if you don't do it now, it's, whose fault is it not? It is not his fault if you don't do it. You have to have faith as small as a mustard seed. And you have to have it when we're not around. You got to have it when you're home. You got to have a discipline when you're in your car. You got to have it when you're thinking about going out to the meeting and you want to make excuses and you want to think about something. You got to think about all the people that survived what you're going through. And if they can make it with less, then guess what? You can make it. Tonight, we're going to turn up. We are going to have a good time. And all I need you to do when you leave this event is I need you to come with the vision of what is it that you want for your life? What's your vision? What, what is it that, you, why are you doing this? Because anybody can do anything. It's, it's a million and one things out there. You guys know that, right? I mean, social media does a great job of letting you know there's a million and one ways to make money. Everything from a job to a Uber to all kinds of stuff you could do to make money. But if you're going to be here and you want to make it to the top, you've got to stop beating yourself up on the inside. You've got to stop telling yourself that you can't do it because that's what's stopping you. And the reason we don't have a, a room full of diamonds at this event is because mentally what you go through on a daily basis. So the moment you get back home and the moment you feel like you want to give up or you don't want to give the full effort, remember the story of Peter. And remember, all it takes is for you to just step out on faith and give everything that you have. Because when you do that, the gates will open. The opportunities will be there, and the people 
that have said no before will turn around and start to say yes. I'm going to leave you with this last thing. My first national convention, my upline at the time, I came with two other girlfriends in the business. And at my upline, um, we had, uh, he had met my two friends, and we were at the event, and we were out, and we were socializing. We had dinner. It was like, um, like a cocktail party where they could meet all the leaders. And so me and my two girlfriends, we was like, yeah, we're going to tear this thing up. Like, we're going to have fun. We're going to make some money in this. And I remember we would be, like, talking about all the stuff that we were going to do. And I felt like we were, like, right here, me and them. Like, where we going to go? What we going to do? And we, we had, like, a ton of things of like what the business was going to buy us. And maybe about like the last day of the event, they were having something special. And he was like, you got to stop hanging out with your friends. I'm like, what you talking about? These are my girls. And he looked at me, and I just, I didn't know him long. And he said, you're going to make it and they aren't. I'm like, dang, what? can you see into the future? What you, what you got? What do you know that I don't know? Faith doesn't just show up in your mind, whether you understand it or know it or not. Faith shows up in your eyes. It shows up in your posture. It shows up in your vocabulary. It shows up in your, the way you go about doing things, how you make decisions. Faith is not just, oh, I'm going to have faith. People can see faith. How can he see that? What in the world would possess him to think that by looking at me and seeing how I maneuvered, that I was going to make it, and I had only been in the business for two weeks, Two weeks, and my girlfriends were just as excited as I was. It's one little small thing that you don't understand that will light up you on the inside, and everybody will see it. And when they see it, they know you're destined for greatness. They absolutely know it. I used to think he has some special powers. And I look back, I was like, I always remember that story. How did he know that? And even today, I can look at somebody and I can see if they truly have faith or are they just saying they have faith because you glow on the inside. It's like back in the day. Remember Sure Enough, that movie Sure Enough? And remember them? And it was like, I got the... <laughs> And it was like a big, like, glowing thing around him. It was like, Do you remember that? Last Dragon. That's what faith looks like. Faith looks like, I remember Cece and Selena had their first event in North Carolina, and we got down there, and it wasn't a great turnout, but we had drove hours. And I was like, okay, I'm going around the library, and I'm going to find me some guests. Remember that, Cece? Because that's what faith looks like. Like, faith is like, I don't give up. Like, it, I'm going all the way to the end. And to, and to the last second of the last minute to I can't go no more, I'm going to keep calling. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep making it happen. I'm not giving up. And I'm going to give it everything. And when you look at me, you look at me, I want you to see what I have. You ain't got to ask nobody nothing. People, you, you don't have to tell somebody you're great. People will look at you and see that you're great. They will look at you. That's the only reason he could have known that they didn't even make it to 60 days in the business. 60 days later, they were both gone. Both 
gone. How did he know? Because you can see faith. And if I don't have faith, I don't want nobody to see me. Because I know when you don't have faith, I know what it looks like on the outside. You look defeated. There's no way you can lead anyone when you don't have faith. There's no way you can build a team when you don't have faith. It's literally no way. So if you're wondering why it's not working, you don't have the glow. When you have the glow, people are attracted to you because they can see it. That's my last little bit. I absolutely love you from the bottom of my heart. I'm here because I have faith, but I'm also here because I know some of you are not done with your dream. And I'm going to be here and I'm going to ride you like a racehorse until you get it right, until you figure it out, until it clicks in your mind and you make it happen. I am going to be here. Do you understand that? until you can figure out how to have faith to get everything that God has already promised you. Your mansion is awaiting you. The car you want to drive is awaiting you. That vacation, that lifestyle is waiting for you to just have faith. And when that happens, titanium, here we come. Yeah, 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 yeah. And one more time, let's give it up for Diamond Senior Vice President Tashina Anderson. On a further note, uh, next time we do an agenda, I'm going to go before her. Just letting y'all know right now is the last time that happens. Man, thank God for lunch break. All right, so. Listen up, guys. This is powerful information. Anybody here, you, you like what you heard just now? Yeah. Clap a little louder if you're going to apply what you heard. Yeah. That's the real value in this, and I'm going to tell you over and over and over again. A couple announcements, all right? Real quick. Uh, VIP members, you got a VIP? Put your hand up. Okay, VIP. All right, we're going to do a lunch with the diamonds uh, is that right? Correct. Okay, I got to look at the boss lady. That's, I got like six bosses in here, by the way, right? <laughs> lunch with the diamonds uh, when we break for lunch in a minute, okay? So I um, hope you got questions ready. All right, Be, okay. Now listen, you asked us the good stuff. Say what? <laughs> VIPs can be excused now. Some of y'all are like, man, is it too late to buy VIP? <laughs> all right. So listen, all right. But before you, anyone else leaves, I want to bring um, a gentleman back up to the stage. We have a special announcement. I'm sorry we told VIPs to leave. I, I, I'm not ready for y'all to leave yet. I need y'all to hear this. Come back, come back, come back, come back. All y'all come back in here real quick. I need you guys to hear this. This is more important than a lunch right this second. Something major just happened in the company while we were in the training and I want to bring the CSO of the company, Chief Sales Officer, Larry Harper, back to the stage. Let's get up for Larry real quick. Thank you. This will just take one minute. We have a new platinum. And, and I'll tell you a little bit about this guy. Uh, he, he's been around the business since 2001. April of 2001, and uh, his journey to platinum has, has not been easy, but he never quit. He stepped out on faith, and he stayed in, in faith. Uh, it took him 10 years to go SVP. 
10 years, okay? But now he is officially a new platinum. This, this gentleman is one of the best customer acquisition specialists in our business. He is also one of the great partner acquisition specialists in our business. And I can tell you, he had an opportunity to go platinum before the purge or after the purge. And what he said was, I want to go after the purge so people understand that points do work. Okay? So the bottom line is our newest platinum senior vice president is a gentleman we call Day One Dave, David Silverman. Dave, Dave, is, Dave is not here, but Dave will be able to see your response on video. All right, y'all, so thank you. Let's get up for Larry. Listen, y'all, um, listen real quick. I want you to hear this real quick. Um, is this, is that Dave actually texted me before he hit platinum, by the way, and he said, Kurt, I wanted to be there. I got a prior engagement. It was a business event he had set up. But Dave is responsible for a lot of what you see in our app, all right, the legacy app. He said, Kurt, please don't let people walk out of there without utilizing the app and knowing about the app. So I told him, I said, you got my word, Dave. I'll make sure everybody here knows the power of the app. So during my training and during some of the announcements, we'll go, go in a little bit more about the app if we don't already have a senior vice president on Platinum who's training specifically on that, all right? So once again, if you know Dave, he's a nice guy. And it's always good to see the good guys win, right? So uh, Dave's a real good guy. He, he's, he's definitely a, a winner in my book. So all right, listen, lunch is to the left when you leave out. All right, and Renee, are we ready yet for lunch? SVPs first, all right? And listen, a couple of things. This is going to be a working lunch. You get your food, you bring it back. The reason why is because we want to give you all of your money's worth for this training. If you take an hour break, that's money wasted, all right? So come back inside, eat your food, all right? I believe the next trainer is me, all right? So I actually got, they got me doing double duty today, right? So host it, train it, do the party afterwards. It's all good. All right, so we got the SVPs headed out, platinums headed out, double platinums, diamonds headed out. Yes, ma'am. Oh, how do you get a ticket for tonight? That's a, who does not have their ticket yet? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, listen. If you want to get a ticket for tonight, pay attention. Everybody pull out your phone. You go to diamondpoolparty.eventbrite.com. I'm going to say it again. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you. You saved me because I'd probably get fussed out if I did announce the website. diamondpoolparty.eventbrite.com. And you're all welcome to come. My community has never seen this much ethnicity. We gonna give them a shock today. Oh yes, it's gonna be a very diverse population in my community today. Diamondpoolparty.eventbrite.com Diamondpoolparty.eventbrite.com Food will be available there. All right. Uh, we do have a few partners who are bringing their children to an adult event. However, I'm not going to kick your kids out. More importantly, my kids will be there, so can't say it's not a kid event. I got four of them, so <laughs> my kids are going to be there, right? All right. Linda Scott Reed is also sampling and using the new R&R &R CBD massage oil right now. All right, Linda, she, you already got a testimony, right? You, ten, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, it worked. If you are stressed out and you need that relief, holla at Linda Scott Reed, Senior Vice President for that. She has been traveling the country doing those. All right, that's big, so yes. So we're ready? 
All right, so with that being said, you got a 15-minute break. You could do what you want. I would suggest you eat. I also would suggest eating quick before I get to the line because I got a, I could eat a horse right now. I'm hungry. All right, so with that being said, y'all, 15-minute break it is. Hold up. Let me give you a time. It's 1225. 12.